Collingwood over the years and the Magpies are well served in the experience field but they've also got Kim a lot of young talent there young Gavin Wanganeen going to Essendon next year is a super player. We were in the centre of the ground the ball's not far away from being bounced so the crowd is really building up. It wasn't until Greg Phillips I was in the middle Greg Phillips at centre half back yells out Timmy Timmy as loud as he could I said what coach and I'm thinking you know where's he want me to stand what's going on here and he goes Salisbury's picking up Wanganeen. And I went and I turned, of course, I had just had visions of Greg Anderson back in 86 in the final series when and Scotty did a number on him. Anderson will be first there, close to the line, and take the last one. Vigorous Salisbury, and off she's on. Balby went in vigorously. And David, the tackle, the tackle was a bad one. It was a shocking tackle. And uh, I think the Port Adelaide players have reacted uh, in a way that you perhaps might expect them to when their champion sentiments put down. I could see it and I thought, oh, we can't have that. So I looked to centre half forward and David Hines, who uh, a terrific finals player for us, an aggressive player, had his goatee on at the time and him and Alan Bartlett are just belting one another like this, you know, and I said, Hines, hey, Hines, hey. And he goes, what? And I said, Salisbury picking up Wanganeen. And he goes, and he points at him, and I can't use the language, but he said, <laughs> he said, you touch him and I'll kill you. And you could see, whoa, and oh, Gav just jogged away. Scotty Salisbury, brave man, but he wouldn't take on David Hines, no chance in the world, like, so So we knew uh, Wankers was safe. Yeah, I, I thought maybe, you know, there might be a bit of a, a, a chance for him to, to rough me up. And you know, so I was sort of expecting, I was, I had my wits about me, I was, I was a little bit, uh, um, yeah, I, I was sort of expecting it, so, but it didn't happen. And I found out later after the game why. <laughs> and that was because, uh, uh, yeah, Greg Phillips and, and a couple of boys, I think it was Greg, went up to him and said something like, you touch him and I'll kill you. So um, maybe that's why he didn't touch me. Had to give Scotty a little bit of a talk and too, they knew the players were right behind Gavin, you know, because there was that thing they were going to rough him up and, you know, there was, there was going to be that manhandling of players. And, and like you said, Glenelg Port, there was always that feeling. And a few blues breaking out at both ends of the ground, and it is on! It is on in the right foot forward area. G. David Hines threw a couple of the biggest right hand roundabouts I've ever seen in my life, and uh, Hodges was in there so too. Oh, if I was at Glenelg, that's exactly what I'd be doing. You know, 16 year old Gav was uh, super talented. Uh, Scott Salisbury is, uh, you know, uh, Got the best out of his ability, and he was a you know he's a yeah, he's a great fella, but uh, I think that was a fault of Glenelg of actually trying to put Scott Salisbury on a young 16 year old because if you watch enough of it, I don't think Scott got anywhere near him. Uh, Gavin was just going to run around him; it was just going to be a joke. So maybe uh, maybe they erred in that sense. Back there is Christie thumps it out clear, a loose ball. Salisbury under pressure, lost the football. Great pace to hit Ringanine on the left leg. Uh, I think the first one was, uh, I think Scotty had the ball and I, I tackled him and the ball uh, they, uh, had actually you know, spilt out from him and, and, and I managed to tap it out in front of him uh, and ran onto it, tapped it out in front of myself again just to try and get the ball to bounce back up to me and sort of, yeah, being a young fella had all that pace back in those days. He just grew as that game went on and um, I don't think it really mattered what, what they did. Um, you know, good players don't get shirt fronted, good players don't, you know, they just, they, they can get around it and that's that's what he did and he just... He found the ball. And the second one was uh, a, a nice little handball from Timmy Ginova, um, just bang, hit me on my chest and, oh gee, it's here. So I um, had, no one, oh, I only had Ross Gibbs between myself and the goals, about 35 metres out and I ran in and a very low kick, you know, he almost touched it on the line. I don't know why I kicked it so close to him, but uh, thank goodness he didn't get a finger on it. And Timmy came up to me after, oh, great goal, but next time just kick it a little bit higher, will you? Hutton is off, bow in pursuit, the kick is a low one, Hodges has two to beat. He kept the ball in front, he still has the football, gets the handle back to Jennifer, he gives it to Wanganeen, the young sensation kicks towards goal and he has dribbled it through. Oh, it just cleared Ross Gibbs and he's kicked this. A really important goal. I have ripped around to run to get to him and his little face smiling and I went up and I said, I said, just do it a bit higher next time. <laughs> As we did the high five and of course Wakers just smiled and off he went again and he was just, uh, he was just incredible. His skill level for such a young man um, did energise us and those goals were very important in that, in that term. Needed for a 17 year old kid and just sat there standing in that third quarter 
it just goes to show that um, you know he, he, he as, as we know today, what a great player he was. You know, and uh, and it was just a privilege to play with Gavin. You know, at the start of his career. The boys are juniors. He knows where the goals are, Gavin Wanganui. As I said earlier, he also can win the ball. One goal to Wanganui, his second for the quarter.